You can say there are two different types of shame, they say in psychology. And there is healthy shame, healthy shame, uh, which is like, I don't know, let's say I done something, I, I, I didn't, I done something against conscience, my own conscience, or I have done something that is not according to my values or something, I hurt somebody or uh, uh, I don't know, I didn't keep my word, I lied, I, I created, so, I don't know, doing something and... Uh, and, and then I realize it and I feel shame or even things like, I don't know, I, I go to the bathroom and you and then you have some toilet paper on you or this kind of silly stuff. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of me? Some shame or something like that. But the healthy shame is um, it's more like, hey, I'm aware that I have done something, a behavior that created suffering for me or others. And I regret it. I have shame. This is good. This is good because if we didn't have that, we can be a psychopath. You don't give a shit about anybody and you hurt people without having any remorse. But um, anyway, coming back to shame. So that healthy shame is like, hey, I've done something, created suffering. I regret it. I'm sad. I see it. I need this to get back on track. Maybe I need to clean up, to do some accountability, to apologize, to repair. And this is conscience. It's like, and then I, I learn from the thing, I forgive myself and I move on. It's like, oh, I fucked up. I have shame. Okay. Now, toxic shame is I've done something or something happened and now I believe I am fucked up. You know that I had done something bad is that I am bad. I am bad. You know, and that that is like we don't learn from it. We are wallowing in it. Self-deprecation self-pity self-hatred okay uh, and it doesn't help anybody this is like a, like a, almost like a disease so it's uh the idea is to uh move from from toxic shame deficiency story to uh, having healthy shame regret you know helping us to have conscience to to have a life uh you know where we create less suffering for others yeah, the thing about shame is, is I mean, for me, it's very difficult because emotion, because, I mean, can be false shame, yes? I mean, maybe you don't have shame, but the society put the shame in you. That's, that's what you are saying. That's, I think, most amount of shame in this kind of stuff. Uh, and that, that is, it's, it's, it's shame. It feels like shame, but it is... <laughs> It's not conscience, is that we have been shamed and guilt trip and all of this about sexuality, about the body, the body needs to be in a certain way and it's not okay to do this. So all this uh, shaming, unconscious parenting is based on, you know, to control obedience and shaming. And then basically this has an effect that we now, we are, uh, putting back in the box our authenticity and our how you said you're like oh yeah joy and no problem and then hey it's wrong oh it's wrong and this happens often especially in childhood then we learn that it's not okay i need to be in a certain way this creates this sense of um Yeah, lack of freedom, the sense of the future ego, the ego that is wounded and not free and in prison, these expectations, what other people expect me to be, what would they think of me, uh, how to be, so they think good of me, they don't think bad of me, you know, the fourth mm -hmm. way, you know, considering is very much connected to shame, uh, you know, shame is the agent to enforce it. They feel shame when I, they are with me because I do something that they, they are like, oh, no, you should not do that. It happens with people, no? But also sometimes it's, it's good to have this little shame, to have these little pictures, or not. I mean, 
because without shame, like you say, uh, I don't know if the world will survive. Huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, now I get what you are saying there that other people, because other people have been shamed and put in a box and when they see you expressed like this and, and full of life or something, no filter, their own conditioning, they were ashamed and guilt trip now comes at you. It's like a, like a, like a virus, basically. The real virus is this mm -hmm. one, uh, you know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but yeah, so the way I look at shame, the way I see is that a lot of that toxic shame that I'm bad, uh, that I'm, I'm rotten, I'm a fuck up, that, that can be totally eliminated. But I mean, it takes time and one has to be, you know, has good skills and good knowledge and to be committed to it. Uh, then this inner considering in the fourth way, this what would they think of me? Uh, you know, this trying to be in a certain way to get love and approval, uh, to go against myself, but to be in a certain way to, to avoid being judged or to be uh, uh, loved and approval, that also is like a prison that is, it's a, uh, it's great suffering. So that also can go. It's possible to go away so one can be free, fully expressed, fully expressed and uh, to allow oneself to, to, to do, to, to be free, to do whatever one wants that can happen. You, I know people like that and I can see it in people, it, it can grow. I used to be much more afraid and much more what they think of me and I couldn't speak and I'm in a group, when I speak, I'm, I'm thinking about it a long time before. Oh, <laughs> make it perfect and to plan it. And so this, there's no spontaneity, there's no creativity, there's all this calculating, controlling. It's stressful, it's like, oh my God. And then you think, uh, you go afterwards, man, did I, was it right? Man, I, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I talked too much. Maybe, you know, that is a lot of shame in it, but it's all ego. False personality can go. Now, there's no danger in that because we still have conscience. Uh, usually the conscience is, is buried and all of that, but uh, conscience can, basically we have some emotional knowingness of what's right in relation to others. And we deeply know, you know, God-given mechanism that we know when we've done something wrong or some, something it's, it's hurtful. I don't want to say wrong, but it's hurtful. Or So uh, we can still be free and not care at all about what other people think about us, but, but still be in touch with this. Um, you know, conscience is very much like Moral compass, true moral compass, uh, true moral compass, not commandments, not the rules, not the rules of life. These are when the conscience no longer works or the conscience is asleep, then you need the rules of life, how to be and all of that. But through good spiritual work, the conscience is uh, present. And so I, 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 I know when I, I hurt somebody and I, I feel regret. And I, 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 the idea is that conscience is connected to this fact that that there are no others. This is some deep uh, concept, but that actually you are me, and everybody you meet is me. So if I do anything, um, you know, like uh, harmful, uh, that I'm hurting myself. You know, and all this, the golden rule uh, that appears in many traditions, the golden rule in Christianity, but it appears in Buddhism and in Aztec, in this thing that do unto others how you want other people to do unto you. Treat others how you want to be treated. You know, this is a rule. It's a smart rule. Uh, whoever put it is trying to have us have less suffering. Because if you live according to this rule, it will be less suffering and it will be easier life. But from a deeper, if one becomes more conscious and in touch with conscience and uh, freer from deficiency story and false personality, one feels that. If we can feel other people. So we, we naturally want to, to be loving and friendly and kind and uh, helpful and supportive. 
However, this doesn't mean that if somebody is an asshole and attacks me or something, it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, I can, hey man, back off, get away from me, I'm going to call the cops, it's not okay. Doesn't mean weakness. You can still put boundaries and, 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 uh, and be able to, to use anger and all of this to be real. But ultimately yeah. underneath is a sense of benevolence, lovingness, yes, goodwill. It's a very, I don't know, it's very fine line, you know, it's really, you need intelligence to, to really do it. I mean, yes. Um, yeah, we are talking now uh, mentally, but uh, using concepts and intellectually, but this inner compass, this inner heart, I mean, whatever, in consciousness, um, it knows. It knows. I lied but, now. I lied to her. It hurts me. And it's not okay. I know. I I, I did this. I, I tricked this person. I uh, I was unfairly lashing out at them. And I can see, man, that was my shit, man. That's, uh, you know, we, we feel we feel other people. And, and we feel the other people are me. So it's not like, oh, fuck them. I don't care about them, you know. But that's not the intellectual. It starts being intellectual and starting to have teachings, but ultimately we we realize that this is in us. This is true. It's it's a and it's a better way to live. Okay. Uh, to be to be more familiar about emotions, and to uh, identify the the there are five buckets like uh, mad, uh, so anger, uh, 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 fear, sadness. Uh, shame and joy, and uh, they say. I mean, it's a easy. It's a like a, that. Now you have the bucket of anger. This is a primary emotion. In the anger, you have rage, frustration, irritation, uh, all of this. In the sadness, you have melancholy. You have deep grief. You have the, the despair. You have. A little sad, you know. It's all they are in the range of sadness. Then there is a uh, 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 fear, like a little stress, a little anxious, panic, uh, all of this. So, uh, so to know that there are four or five buckets, and then they they have different flavors. So to identify that, but then to also realize that the emotions are not in the head. Uh, the story is in the head, but. To say, okay, oh, I feel sad. I feel sad. Well, how do you know you feel sad? Well, um, to identify the, to, to notice the energy of the feeling in the body. That's very important. Uh, not just to be in the head here. We can't do anything if we are not aware of the emotions. The emotions are in the body. And we haven't been trained to uh, notice where is it? The shame is here. The fear is in the belly. Uh, you know, there are sensations, there are energies. Uh, so that's a first step, some, some somatic awareness of the energy of the feeling. But without that, we are just talking about things. It's not going to go very far. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>